Okay, here we are, Pinot Black, and we're at the, and you can see our south hemisphere, but what's disturbing is the signatures that we're getting. Uh, you can see that we're basically equalizing on our magneticism from north to south. You can see basically by looking at that, and I can pump that up so we don't have to go into each one of these, and I'll also be able to put the player on here in a second. But as you can see what we're getting there, we're getting equalization. Uh, more than likely this is um, due to the CME out in space that's coming and hitting our plasma, our auroral, our coronal in space. Remember, we're on average normally 60,000 miles an hour. We've been going 6,000 miles an hour on a new average of light on a travel through space. And we rotate towards the sun because we're magnetically connected. You really can't get out of that. It would take, it'd take an, an enormous amount of magnetical energy. Now, there is an enormous amount of magnetical energy, and I'll just basically say her, because that's basically becoming the new name for what people would call Nibiru, Planet X, whatever. It's a lot more than just one planetoid object out there that's to do with magneticism. So it's not just her, it's not just Nibiru, it's not just, and everybody always thought Nibiru was going to hit. It's not going to hit Earth. It's not even going to hit Jupiter, but it's more than likely going to, and it's basically following somewhat of a coordinate because Elenin is an out, like an outrider. Okay, Elenin is an outrider comet of uh, Nibiru. Her, basically, the number thing is to say her. So basically, the thing to be worried about is we're equalizing, and as you see, the magnetical signature that's getting put here. Also this, because all this stuff here, these colors, and also the coronal hole, i.e. holes, as you see this, are going on at the South Pole right now. Okay? Yes, everything you're seeing is basically a reading, okay? Or coronal, north and south, okay? Actual, factual data. As you see, these are somewhat matching, but they're not... They're not drawn by man, they're basically drawn by computer generation of data, okay? And also this here. And it's not matching exactly. This is not matching exactly, but it's pretty darn close. We're equalizing. The only thing that's holding our ass from not doing some kind of neutral in magnetical is this right here. And look at the uptick on quakes like crazy, okay? That's a very cool thing right here because this doesn't make this match so that we end up with a negative negative charge or a positive positive charge okay so let's go ahead and look at the quake action and basically we'll come back and get a player on this because basically you need to realize the neutrality here that's going on okay as you see back here we were whipping the magneticals that are out in space that ought come off the sun to keep us in our basically earth is in a cage okay we are in the cage magnetical connection of the sun we don't want to become a moon or Mercury, okay? So, there. Very good. And there's your cage of her magnetical lines in the connection to the sun, okay? And our north and our south pole, dark side of Earth right there, okay? This is towards the sun. And we're in a very weird equal, equal, equalization, equilibrium. Equilibrium, equalizing, okay, positive, negative, okay, the only thing that's keeping us normal is what we are is right here, and <clears throat> you can see what we're getting here, and when you figure what the next color it goes to, it goes to black, so that's what's going on here, and also coronal opening up here at the same time, coronal opening, coronal opening, coronal opening, coronal opening, <coughs> coronal opening all right you go ahead and count privately the 6.0 in higher quakes and the 5.0 higher quakes okay and it's to do with a lot more than just alignment of planets because there's a lot more out there there's a 6.1 you just keep eyeballing yourself 6.5 6.6 6.1 6 6.3 6 and look at all the fives I'm sure there's going to be small quakes. There's all kinds of ones that are not even on here. Okay. 6.0, 6.0. It's 
to do with what her is doing and plus other objects out there. It's an alignment of dark planets that you can only even see that don't have lumin an a luminosity. And I've told you about the meatball, which is out there. And there's also stuff that's large, huge. Now, realize that this is dark in space, okay? Now, let me back out again for a second. And then also I'll take it up to paint because I can zoom in even more. And realize that I don't touch and mess with any of the colorization or anything. And this is basically that shot there, okay? There you go. Okay, so we're going to come in even deeper. And you'll see the big meatball, which is back over here, which is at angles hidden in millions and billions of miles of stars here in the middle between the two Soho cameras, okay? But also as we get in, you can see that right there. And I'll get in as big as I can on that right there. And there's also other tons of magnetical properties out in space that are not accounted for that get in alignment and come by and so forth and so on. So let's also go in and zoom and look at this with paint. There's tons of things they try to hide from us. This isn't a typo. Okay, this was a recent shot where they covered something up. Okay, it just gives me another place to zoom in on it more. And basically you'll see the actual factual that they're still the same pixels. You, you would see if someone tried to mess with the picture because you would see the pixels get messed with. So we come down and then we'll scroll right. And there's all this stuff is out there. There's tons of stuff in space. Massive amounts of distance between each other for the most part, but tons of magnetical connections as you can see that object right there. And a magnetical connection off of, and also there's some. I'm going to go to a, a live plate. We'll zoom in on this even more so you realize all that stuff is there. It's all right there in front of your eyes, it's right there. Is that a huge comet? No. More than likely, that is her. So, and possibly the tail of it, but magnetical connections of it. And also that the meatball is back here in its huge roundness. Okay. It's just that it's uh, tons of distance in there between all that massiveness. Let me give you a good example. Of how things hide in space. That's loading. Let me go ahead and basically take you down here and we will zoom out so that you realize that we are at the shot and that they don't mess with any pixels. Okay, I never mess with any pictures. Just I just go to this field to be able to zoom in on this shot and as you can see that stereo A H12. Okay, and you can see the date and all that is there. As you can see there, and then we should be able to zoom in on it from here. There it is to the right, and then zoom in some more. It's all out there. So a crease of massive distances and huge objects when we're getting magnetical pull. And let me go give you some more of the earthquakes, and you'll understand the magnetical pull. If we zoom in here a little bit more. Or actually, I hit the wrong bar. We go zoom in. Pretty much good enough. You can see it. And then we'll zoom out real fast. Make sure you know that uh, there ain't no sleight of hand. There ain't no tricks here. There we go. We'll zoom back out. There you go. It's all there. I'm not advertising for anything, but this will give you a good example of how things are hiding out in space. We're going to zoom in on the sun. Basically, I think I'll take you out first. Well, I'm just at the mercy of the program. It's because it's when we're recording and also running a program, it gets kind of difficult. But we're going away from the sun now, out into space, okay? And now I'll bring you in to the sun. And what we have around us, massive distances. Astronomical is the best way to put it, because basically just... Now here's a huge about of stars that's going to keep going in here. Kind of goes on its own little... Because once you, once I make a mistake and make a move, as you see that we have Mercury there and so forth. <clears throat> now if I come out of this, you'll see rotations, and basically I can give you the well. 
if we see the deepness of space here. Now, before I give you the well totally, well, I think I will, I'm going to be going out and away from the sun, which is right in the well in the middle. We're like in a stadium, a football stadium, and the sun is in the well in the middle. And the sun is not the middle of the solar system, not the Milky Way anyway, not the galaxy, okay? Sagittarius A is. Now, within that, that magneticism of that Oort cloud, it's all pretty much connected to the sun. The rest of the stuff out in space has its own little world. So basically, big bangs, because the idea that more than likely, when the sun and its counterparts did a big bang, and then you have all this other stuff out there, and here you'll see some stars come in that we basically can see from Earth, okay? There's formal hot, Capella, Aldebaran, Alaraf, and they're, as you see, they're all up this way to the left, okay? Otherwise, lots of huge stars out here to the right are still getting named, catalog all the time. There's, there's an infinite amount of stars, okay? We're in the well, okay? And go all the way out again. Levels and platitudes. Space is infinite, okay? That's why black holes aren't really black holes. Black holes are... If anything, the pencil of whatever power to be that you want to call that is power to be. The Earth is nothing but a gnat's ass hiding out. We are nothing but hiding out in space. We are a gnat's ass in space. Now we go back into the well. Okay, because I will zoom back out of this in a second. So all the magnetical stuff is way more than just a few planets. You're going to need to get off your brain sense of the idea, well, it's alignment of this. Well, it is that alignment of that. But it's also the stuff inside this Oort cloud, inside the area of the sun and in the well, as we go past everything out that we know of Uranus and Neptune close to us that's huge and into the sun. Now, the sun just has its magnetical field and everything that you see out around it right now is out there because basically that's the blow up of what everything is out beyond the sun. If I can get it to slow down here and we come back in as I popped out of the sun and out to see Basically, we'll go back to the Oort cloud that surrounds and is one light year in distance, okay? And we can travel those distances very fast. Like I say, we can turn 42 light years into 42 days, 42 hours possibly. It's very simple. It's just physics. And I'm sure there's a bunch of physics out that they're watching my videos. They probably have someone figured it out and are going to try to steal my glory. Well, it's not really going to be stealable. Because I are who I are. And I have what I have. And it's in my brain. There you go. And then a little bit of oratorial and video to show. We can travel through space and time. And we're working on it. And the collider is a big part of it. If they wouldn't have been working on the collider, I wouldn't have been able to figure out what I've figured out. Okay? So they're in the well, into, and then basically we have all these objects on our back door right now. Uranus, Uranus, uh, Neptune, and then all those objects I just showed you in that Soho picture. Because that can see infinite. Just like when we're looking right here, when we get in by the sun, we can see infinite. Everything around that's lights and bright, and bright enough to light up around by the sun. Okay? But there's always you have to have separation. And as we separate and we go up past objects that are huge and far out in space, that's what it's like. Just like that in a stadium. Now I can play around with this and then we can basically, we can zoom back in and we can see the uh, orbitals. And you're not going to really see the, since this is on a plane, this program is on a plane, they don't really have 4D in this. So they can't show you the different where the best thing to do is to show the well because everything rotates the sun at a different angle. And I don't think, I haven't played around with this enough to program enough to know if see if you, and you really don't because everything is set in here on a saucer. Okay? So you don't see that Mercury and all these planets, they do it at different heights. They orbit the sun at different heights. And Venus rotates in a different direction than, and as you see in our motor, our electrical motor, Venus rotates in an opposite direction but it still orbits the sun in the same direction but it venus is the only thing and it's in between just between mercury and earth so that's what helps us out with our positive and negative and that's what we hope that we stay in and when you watch that magnetical that we need to stay in that magnetical connection for our 